Okay, let's do a bit of trig. Question five. Okay, it says if g of x equals tan x over two, then determine all values of x for which g of x is undefined. Now, this is an interesting question because what it's doing is it's asking us to display our understanding of what tan, the period of tan, the asymptotes of tan, and how it can be manipulated when you put a coefficient in front of the angle. Okay, so let's just talk about tan x. Okay, so tan x has asymptotes at negative 90 and 90, right? And it kind of looks like this, okay? Right, but now when we say x divided by 2, what we're saying is we're changing the period of tan, right? So instead of having one tan graph in 180 degrees, because you agree with me that there's 180 between negative 90 and positive 90, we're saying we only have half of a tan graph in 180. So a full tan graph for this form of tan would be 360 degrees. Okay, so what we're saying is we're kind of pushing our asymptotes out, right? So asymptotes are not going to sit at 180 and negative 180, right? Because we're now expanding the period, right? We're expanding it by 2, right? We're basically saying that now instead of 80, it's 180. So we know that at x equal to 180 plus k times 360, it will always be undefined, right? Because it's going to be undefined at 180, because that's its asymptote, right? And then every integer value, right, for 360 degrees, right? So you can see there, negative 180, another asymptote. You could put here, you could put, what would this be? That would be 540, right? Another asymptote. So it's basically saying these asymptotes repeat themselves every 360, right, when added or subtracted from 180. Okay, so they're testing whether you understand this. Okay, now it says, on the set of axes provided, sketch g of x if x is an element of negative 180 and 180. So we know that this side of the graph is going to be an asymptote, and that side of the graph is also going to be an asymptote. And we know that it's going to go through there. Okay, so let's kind of do, let's maybe do positive 90 and negative 90. Um, and then, so we're basically going to go like this. So we're going to go 90, but we're going to divide it by 2. Okay, so it's going to be 1. Okay, and then we put negative 90 in there. It's going to be negative 1. Okay, so it's going to, and maybe you should do this in a pencil, but I am going to live my best life over here. Okay, that's how it's going to look. And then, oh goodness, I maybe should have sketched this in. It's a bit ugly, but that's how it should look. Okay, maybe give it a bit more of a curve, but that's how it's going to look. There's two asymptotes. It's got double the period of what we would expect, right, of a normal tan graph because we have divided our angle by two. Okay, perfect. So that's done. Let's go on to the next question. Okay, dokes. So it says, prove the following identity. Now, I must be honest with you, I love identities like this. I used to do identities like this in the holidays because that's the sort of nerd I am. But I love them, right? What we're saying is manipulate that side and try and make it equal that side. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so I'm going to start here on the left-hand side. Generally start on the side that has the most to work with, right? It's difficult to start with cos 2, right? Because it's like, well, what do we actually do? There's only minimal things we can do. Where's this side? There's plenty we can do. So let's see what we can do, okay? So we have sine 90 plus theta. Now, this is an interesting one, right? Because we need to think back to our sine and cos graphs, okay? So with my sine graph, it goes like this. It starts at zero and it repeats itself like this. But we know that our cos graph is like this, right? Our cos graph, right, runs 90 degrees behind our sine graph, right? So if we shift it at 90 degrees, it becomes a cos graph. And this is what it's saying here. It's saying, if I shift the sine graph by 90 degrees, what does it become? Well, it just becomes the cos graph, right? So that's quite easy, right? But you have to sometimes visualize these different trig graphs, okay? 
So let's now look at the sine squared theta minus 180. I'm going to rewrite it like this. Okay, I'm going to say negative 180 minus theta, like that. It's just a little bit easier. Okay, and we'll manipulate that some more in the next step. Then we have your negative cos 3, 180 plus theta. Okay, so now this is an interesting one because it's saying we're now sitting in the third quadrant because 180 plus theta is the third quadrant. Cos is negative, right? So we're going to say negative. Then we're just going to say here negative cos theta to the power of 3. Okay, I haven't changed the sum. I've just rewritten it slightly differently and I've got rid of the 180 because it's like it's in the third quadrant and it's negative. Let's keep the little um, denominator there and then let's leave the sine squared theta because there's nothing we can do with that right now. Let's simplify a little bit, okay? So here, similarly to what we did over there, right, we're going to say, okay, in the third quadrant, because this is the third quadrant, right? We are now, well, no, now it's 180 minus theta, right? So it's actually going to be sitting in the second quadrant. So what we're going to do is this is just going to become negative sine theta all squared, right? Because we're saying, right, this here is positive, so we just get a theta, right, second quadrant, but we still have this negative over there. It becomes negative sine theta, all squared, right? Then here, this, because it's to the power of three, is going to become positive cos three theta, or cos cubed theta, okay? Because this negative, if we cube it, it's gonna be negative times a negative times a negative, which gives us a negative. Negative and a negative give us a positive. Okay, there's a little bit of algebra here, but not too bad. Okay, there. So let's now simplify a little bit. So we're going to have cos theta. We have negative sine theta squared, which is going to be sine squared theta plus cos 3 theta over, it's not cos 3 theta, it's cos cubed theta. Sorry, I don't want to confuse you with my messed up jargon. Okay. So now we have it in quite a nice form. Let's take, let's just do some factorization maybe. That's always a good bet with these sort of questions because we want to start canceling, right? We want things to start reducing because we want it to equal cos 2 theta at the end. So we, we definitely want some stuff to go away, which is fantastic because that cancels with that. Great. Minus 2 sine squared theta. Now, right? What does sine squared plus cos squared theta equal? Equals 1. So it's 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, so now that's pretty much all we can do on that side. But now let's maybe look at manipulating the right-hand side. Okay, so the right-hand side we say is cos 2 theta. How can we change our cos 2 theta to make it look similar to our left-hand side? Well, yes, I hear you say this one. Fantastic, that is correct. So this actually can equal one minus two sine squared theta, which equals our left-hand side. And we have now proven what they asked us to prove with extra space left over, which is fantastic. Okay, so it was actually a great trick question, right? Can be tricky, but again, you want to go about these things very methodically. Remember your cast, your cast, and also remember how your actual trig graphs look, okay? Don't be scared to do a little sketch, right? That's okay. And then also leverage your formula sheet. Okay, let's now go on to question, what is it? Six. Awesome.